Hi, I'm Norman Wahlberger and we're here at the University of New South Wales. This is problem 14H in our linear algebra course, chapter 4. And we're talking about linear equations here and our aim is to solve this system of linear equations for x1, x2, x3 and x4. So we have three equations in four unknowns. So let's proceed and use row reduction. First thing is to write down an augmented matrix for the system. All right, so we take the first row and we record the coefficients, which are 1, 2, minus 1, 1, and on the right-hand side, separated with this bar here, is a 4. The next row, we have to write down the coefficients, but we have to make sure that they're in the right places. So there's no x1, so we're going to put a 0 here, and then there's 1x2, so that'll go in the x2 column, and then minus 1, 1, and on the right-hand side, a 1. And our final equation, 3x1, 2x2, 0x3, minus 2x4, and 3. So we want a matrix out of this, so we're putting that 0 there, even though there's actually no x3 appearing in that equation. Right, so now we're going to row reduce this matrix, and how do we do that? Well, we start with the top row and the left-hand most entry, which I'll circle here. So we're going to use that entry as a pivot entry or pivot element, and we're going to use it to eliminate the entries in the column below it. How do we do that? We take this row and subtract or add multiples of it to the other rows in order to make those two coefficients zero. Our job's made a little bit easier in this case because one of them is already zero. So there's really only one operation we have to do. We're going to take row three and what are we going to do to it? We're going to subtract three times row one. All right. So this is the uh, operation. The new row three it will be the old row three, namely this one, minus three times row one. And what do we get when we do that? Well, the first row is unchanged. One, two, minus one. 1 and 4. The second row will be the same. 0, 1, minus 1, 1 and 1. And now we have to take this third row and subtract 3 times the first row. So 3 minus 3 times 1 is 0, which is what we want. 2 minus 3 times 2, that's 2 minus 6, which is minus 4. 0 minus 3 times minus 1 is plus 3. And minus 2 minus 3 times 1 is minus 5. And on the right-hand side, 3 minus 3 times 4, that's 3 minus 12, for a total of minus 9. All right, good. And now we move down and to the right. So our next row has its leading entry, this one right here. We're going to use it to eliminate the corresponding entries in the rows below it. So we're going to use this row here. We're going to add actually four times this row to this row, which will make that entry there a zero. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to say that the new row three is the old row three plus four times the row uh, two. Row two. All right, what will that give us? First row stays where it is. And the second row stays where it is. And then we're adding four times this row to the third row, giving us zero, zero. Four times minus one plus three is minus one. Four times one plus minus five is minus one. Four times one plus minus nine is minus five. All right, we're going to do a little bit more cleaning up. We'd like to have this first entry of this row here being plus 1. All right, so we're going to multiply this uh, last row by minus 1, giving us 1, 2, minus 1, 1, and 4, 0, 1, minus 1, 1, and 1, and 0, 0, 1, 1, 5. 
So at this stage, we have all the leading entries are ones, and they are spaced successively down and to the right. So this is in row echelon form. That's good. That's sort of the halfway point in our row reduction. Okay, so now we're going to carry on and we're going to do what's sometimes called back substitution, basically sort of the reverse of what we'd be doing, starting with the bottom row to try to eliminate the entries in the columns above our pivot entries. So above all the ones, we want to clear those things now so that they're all zeros. So that each one of the leading entries will be in a column which only has zeros in it aside from the actual leading entry of one. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with this lowest row that has uh, non-zeros, and we're going to take that leading entry and we add multiples of that bottom row so that the entries above that leading entry are all zero. All right, so let's see what happens. So we're going to, uh, the new row two will be the old row two plus row three. That will make sure that that entry there is zero. We also want that entry to be zero, so we're going to take row one and add also row three to it to get the new row one. All right. So we're going to start with the bottom row, keep it where it is, zero, zero, one, one, five. And we're going to add that row to the row above it, giving us zero, one, one plus minus one is zero, one plus one is two, and five plus one is six. And similarly, we're going to add the bottom row to the row one, 1, 2, 0 here, and 1 plus 1 is 2 again, and 5 plus 4 is 9. Okay. And now we're going to take this 1 here and use it to eliminate the entry above it. So we're going to take uh, row 1 will now be row 1 minus 2 times row 2. Right. What will that give us? That will give us Bottom row is where it is, 0, 0, 1, 1, 5. The second row stays where it is, 0, 1, 0, 2, 6. And our new row 1, taking row 1 and subtracting 2 times our row 2. So we get a 1 and a 0, because this minus 2 times that. Here we still get 0. This minus 2 times that is minus 2. And uh, 9 minus 2 times 6 is minus 3. All right, so we have our uh, equation now in fully reduced row echelon form. So we have our leading entries here. So here are our leading columns. They're leading columns. And this one here is non-leading. non-leading column. So that's going to correspond to a parameter. I remind you that our variables were x1, x2, x3, and x4, and so we're going to set this x4 equal to a parameter lambda. It's a free variable. And then in terms of uh, those other ones, we can write that x1, x2, x3, and x4 is so the x1 will be minus 2 lambda minus 3. So I'm going to write that as minus 3 plus 2 lambda. Okay, I'm just bringing the minus 2 lambda over to the other side. That's x1 equals minus 3 plus 2 lambda. And then the next equation reads x2 equals 6 minus 2 lambda. So x4 is lambda, so we bring that to the other side. And the finally, x3 equals 5 minus lambda. And x4 is lambda. Can't forget that one either. Because x4 was the actual variable that corresponded to the non-leading column. That's the non-leading variable. And so in terms of that, we have expressed the other variables, x1, x2, x3, in terms of that parameter lambda. That's what the row reduction allows us to do. So there's our final solution, showing us that there's a one-parameter family of solutions to this system. This is a line in, in a four-dimensional space, if you like.